guard Jesus Campos at the Mandalay Bay Hotel that took place a full six minutes before he opened fire on the country music concert beneath his window. This, of course, reverses earlier reports that Campos was only shot after the end of the rampage, and it raises profound questions about what actually happened that night and why have police taken so long to pinpoint Paddock's location and what happened to Campos. It's all very confusing, and we're sure it will become clearer by tomorrow night's show. We're going to keep you updated on the story along the way. Well, a month ago, ESPN anchor Jamel Hill called President Trump and his supporters white supremacists in a lengthy tirade on Twitter, which is the social media app that has destroyed many careers and reputations. ESPN declined to suspend her, and now it's paying the price. Hill seems to have determined to make the leap from covering sports to lecturing on everyone on politics. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones recently said he would not tolerate any player who refused to stand for the anthem. In response to that, Hill called on fans to boycott the Cowboys' sponsors. ESPN, ever sensitive to anything to do with sponsors, has suspended Hill for two weeks. Imagine the trouble they could have avoided, though, if they had stuck to sports in the first place, as is their charter. And yet the NFL doesn't itself seem that much better at escaping political controversy. It seems to be courting it recently. On Sunday, the vice president walked out of a game in Indianapolis after players for the San Francisco 49ers protested the national anthem, suggested they hate America. The walkout was apparently done at the urging of President Trump, the VP's walkout. But one congressman is prepared to do a lot more than simply counter-protest the world's richest sports league. Congressman Matt Getz represents the state of Florida. He's a lead sponsor of a bill that would end various tax breaks that professional football enjoys. The congressman joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. So will you just give Always us a, a quick pleasure. outline of what kind of taxpayer subsidy, in effect, the NFL enjoys? Sure, the current millionaires and billionaires associated with professional sports leagues, including the NFL, have a tax exemption. They don't have to pay taxes. So that special treatment that's not afforded to just regular folks in my district or the small businesses on Main Street throughout America. It's my belief that if the Congress is serious about getting rid of the loopholes and special interest giveaways in the tax code in the coming weeks, an easy place to start is by not subsidizing and not giving special treatment to professional sports leagues, particularly when the NFL League office has embraced this unpatriotic behavior. I, I'm confused, though, as to why the Congress would be giving tax breaks to one of the most lucrative businesses in America whose employees are paid, in some cases, tens of millions of dollars a year. Why would we have that in the first place? Well, Tucker, it's just more proof that the average American doesn't need a 70,000-page tax code. The tax code is littered with circumstances where special people and special interest and those with special access to members of Congress get treatment that everyday Americans don't get. That's why I'm proud that President Trump and Speaker Ryan want to have a tax code that's fair, simple, and works for all Americans, but it would seem ludicrous to leave in the tax code special treatment for professional sports leagues when they're not out there uh, shutting down behavior that is not only unpatriotic, it's just an overgeneralized indictment. I mean, rather than taking a knee, we ought to see professional athletes taking a stand and actually supporting this country. Right. And if they've got grievances about specific policies, they should raise those with a solution uh, in mind. You know, I know you're a politician and everything, but everything you said is true as far, uh, about the tax code. That's exactly right. I can verify that as a longtime resident here. And I, I hope you get this done. Thank you, Congressman, a lot. Thank you, Tucker. Tech companies are getting so powerful, most people in D.C. are afraid to criticize them. How powerful? Another example.